Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So, later this week, the Fizz LR Great Saiyan 1 and 2 Extreme Z Awakening will be dropping on the global side of the game. So, in today's video, I want to quickly go over their EZ8 details with you guys and also take a look at their Extreme Z area event to maybe help you get a head start on your preparations. Now, starting with the details first, as always, we'll take a look at their uh, current details and then jump over to their Extreme Z Awakening for comparison purposes. So, their current leader skill is Super Type Allies, HP, Attack, and Defense plus 100% when team includes all five super types. So, normally, if it was just this, that would actually be a really decent leader skill, right? But unfortunately, we do have this restriction, which uh, I really don't like, and unfortunately, they don't get rid of it with the EZA, so that kind of sucks. But anyways, moving on to the 12k super Twin Justice Rush. It causes lots of damage and seals super attack, and then the 18k super is Burning Justice, causes mega class of damage, and raises super class allies attack by 30% for two turns. Passive is super class allies keep plus four, and defense plus 50%, and extreme class enemies defense minus 70%. So as you can tell, this unit was very much geared towards support, but unfortunately outside of the support, they really couldn't do too much on their own. They did correct that with the Extreme Z Awakening, so let's uh, move over to that. So their new leader skill with the Extreme Z Awakening is Super Type Allies Q plus three, HP attack and defense plus 130%. Once again, very good, but only when your team includes all five super types. So when it comes to team building, if you want to use them as a leader, you're pretty restricted as far as who you can bring on the team, or at least which combinations of units you're able to bring, right? So I really wish they just would have gotten rid of this part and kept this, but it is what it is. Uh, super attack, 12k super, raises attack and defense for one turn and causes lots of damage and seals super attack. So before it was just cause of damage and seal super. So now you raise attack and defense for one turn. And same thing with the 18k super, raises attack and defense for one turn, causes mega colossal damage and raises super class allies attack by 30% for two turns. So this is exactly the same, uh, no additional attack. 35% or 40% would have been nice, but 30% is still very, very good. Now for their passive, it's attack and defense plus 70%, super class allies keep plus four, and defense plus 50%, plus an additional attack plus 58%, and launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack when attacking extreme class enemies, and then extreme class enemies defense minus 70%. So just like before, they're definitely better against extreme class enemies, so you should bring them on teams where you know you're gonna be fighting an extreme enemy, right? And on top of that, they do have their own attack and defense boost now. They also have the ability to launch up to, well in theory, three supers with hidden potential investment, but they have this additional super on their passive. They're getting a good amount of attack with this additional attack plus 58%, and this debuff, I believe, is exactly the same as before. Uh, yeah, 70%. So. They're just a much more self-sufficient unit now, as opposed to just being purely there for support and nothing else. They can do their own damage. They get a lot more defense. I mean, not a ton more. I don't think they're still going to be like a good tank by any means, but they can actually hold their own a little bit on defense now, as opposed to being a bit of a defensive liability before the uh, EZA, right? And of course, they still make the rest of the rotation more tanky with that support. And uh, they make the rest of your team hit harder too with the super attack or the 18k super. So uh, yeah, definitely a great Extreme Z Awakening in my opinion. And they also happen to have one of my favorite card arts in the entire game, summonable or free to play. So uh, there you go, guys. That is the LR Great Saiyan Man 1 and 2 Extreme Z Awakening. Now let's pop over to their Extreme Z area event, which is uh, apparently dropping on November 11th, 2021, but I'm not 100% sure if that's actually the date, because aren't we getting some kind of 
Extreme Z campaign where they release the events we need to uh, Dokken Awaken, the LR first, and then later on we get the Extreme Z area event to get the Extreme Z Awakening medals. Uh, that's been the case pretty much for every other free-to-play LREZA so far, I'm pretty sure, so I feel like it's going to be the same this time around, but I guess we'll see. But either way, this is the Extreme Z area event, and uh, there's only one stage, like all of the other ones, where you can fight the LR Great Saiyan 1 and 2 to get their uh, Extreme Z Awakening medals. In total, we need 45 to perform all three steps of the Extreme Z Awakening. And as far as the units you're allowed to bring, this is the full pool. It says they all need to be fully Extreme Z Awakened. And uh, they're all just characters from the Hero Extermination Plan Extreme Z Area event. So you want to have at least six of them uh, complete by the time that the Extreme Z Area comes out. So you can build a full team. And uh, as far as which units you want to bring, I mean, I'm sure all of them would be effective. All of them would be good. Uh, with the exception of the Int one, since obviously Great Saiyan Man 1 and 2 is a Fizz type enemy, right? But otherwise, just make sure you have 6 of them done, and you should be good to go. So uh, that pretty much covers the Great Saiyan Man 1 and 2 EZA that's coming up. Um, in terms of how you can get all the medals to actually token awaken them from the SSR to LR, that is a fairly lengthy and painful process that we'll cover in a separate video. But uh, before we go, let's quickly talk about one bonus unit, which is also going to be getting an Extreme Z Awakening very soon on Global, and that would be the Tech PyCon. So before the EZA, Leader Skill is Tech and SDR Types Q plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 30%, Super Attack Supreme Damage, and Greatly Lowers Attack. And passive is Q plus 3, Attack plus 7000, and Defense plus 3000 when facing only one enemy. So clearly a very, very outdated passive right there. It was basically unusable up until this Extreme Z Awakening. So with the EZA, leader skill is tech and STR types, Q plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 90%, super attack supreme damage, and greatly lowers attack and defense. And passive is attack plus 81%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 98% when attacking. Q plus 3 when facing only one enemy and other World Warriors category allies, defense plus 40%. So, I think this EZA is decent. Um, I don't love it, mainly because of the fact that he's not getting any defense before he super attacks, and he's actually, unfortunately, one of the best linking partners for uh, LR Goku and Piccolo, and they're both slot 2 units, so even though they're great linking partners for each other, they actually don't make a very good rotation because whoever you put in that first slot is going to be in trouble if there's any attacks before this unit or the Goku and Piccolo get to attack, right? So um, that kind of sucks, but I do love the fact that he's greatly lowering attack and defense. So if you're facing any enemies that can be debuffed, like on Super Bad Road, for example, then he's going to make them do a lot less damage to you while allowing you to do a lot more damage to that enemy. So that's great. Um, the additional buffs here, you know, the passive obviously is a huge, huge improvement. He's going to do some decent damage, you know, get some okay defense. Not great, but some okay defense after the super once again. And also some additional support for other world warriors is nice. But uh, yeah, overall, just a decent Extreme Z Awakening. Definitely could have been better in my opinion. Um, as far as the Extreme Z Awakening medals you need, you'll get them from the uh, Int Super Gogeta Extreme Z area or Extreme Z battle event. So uh, there you go guys, that is the Tech PyCon EZA also coming very very soon. And that's going to do it for today's video. Uh, like I said, I will be making a separate video for anybody that hasn't had a chance to even acquire the Great Sandman 1 and 2 yet let alone Extreme Z Awaken them, so definitely keep an eye out for that. And uh, that's it guys, that is going to be today's video, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now, 
And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.